So to what extent do we see uh, these virus outbreaks across Asia spilling into concerns o into equity markets, right? Because, for example, uh, Taiwan stocks actually closed high yesterday. Lots of people saying, saying that Japan remains a really good buying opportunity. Does it change your perspective or your positioning at all for the region? Well, you know, I mean, the COVID-19 situation is worrying in Asia. I mean, you've got spikes in uh, several parts of Asia and many parts of Asia are trying to rein in the uh, problem. But, uh, you know, COVID-19 is here to stay. It's not going to go away anytime soon. Uh, it will come in waves. And I think the market has sort of internalized it, I feel. Uh, it's discounted the fact that COVID-19 is going to be with us for quite a while. And so any sharp dips in the market, uh, we feel, will be an opportunity for investors to accumulate because the medium-term picture has not changed uh, in our view. We're still positive on the medium term. Global economic recovery is still on a firm footing. Um, and earnings growth is also very, very strong. We're seeing a V-shaped recovery in earnings, V-shaped recovery in the economies. Uh, of course, you know, from time to time, it will be affected by the COVID-19 surges. But uh, we think that, you know, governments around the world have benefited in the last 14 months from reading in COVID-19. They've learned quite a lot from it. And uh, so we have confidence that, you know, uh, the situation will be uh, controlled to some extent uh, in most parts of Asia, at least, uh, through various measures. And uh, so I think the longer term picture, uh, investors should not lose sight of the longer term picture. Where do you sit on the inflation debate? Because we had the Fed attempting to soothe markets again overnight. But here in Asia, whether you're talking about, you know, China or South Korea or a number of other countries that I've seen a rise in inflation numbers, right? Is it still transitory for this part of the world? Well, you know, I mean, inflation is it, it is trending up. I mean, and it is normal. We feel it is normal because uh, essentially, uh, you know, economies are recovering. So, you know, demand is also pushing inflation numbers up. There's also a supply bottleneck. And as Fed officials have said repeatedly, we think that it's a temporary uh, supply bottleneck. I mean, as the pandemic situation eases, the bottlenecks will also ease. So we think inflation is transitory, uh, you know. And in, of course, you know, inflation is in the forefront right now. It's going to spook investors. It's going to cause market volatility, something that we can't run away from. Uh, but we feel that, you know, once again, just like COVID-19, if in investors look beyond the, you know, the next uh, three to four months, uh, maybe over the next 12, 18 months, the picture is starting to look even better. Uh, you know, so we think inflation will not be a big, big problem. Um, we think that it will, the numbers will eventually come off, maybe not as much as we would like to, but uh, to, to see. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, we don't think it's a big, pro big problem. We don't think the Fed is about to tighten policy anytime soon. And uh, once again, you know, we think that any sharp dips because of inflation concerns uh, would, would be a buying opportunity in uh, several parts of Asia, maybe around the world as well. Yeah, to your point earlier, this GTV chart on the Bloomberg showing how Asian stocks have underperformed and that timing has really coincided with the resurgence in coronavirus cases around the region. But as you said, how much of it, this is, uh, is an opportunity given that valuations are also going to be looking a little bit more attractive and where would you go in that case? Well, you know, you're right. I mean, if you look at uh, Asia, if you look at the valuations for Asian equities uh, based on the MSCI Asia X Japan Index, uh, and you look at the forward 12-month uh, price earnings ratio, uh, MSCI Asia X Japan is now trading about one standard deviation above the five-year average. And to me, that's not very high. In fact, it's just below one standard deviation uh, relative to the five-year average. So that's not very high. Uh, you know, with interest rates as low as they are right now, uh, the P multiples can afford to expand uh, significantly high from where they are right now. And so, you know, we think uh, Asia has prospects. I mean, the pullback has made valuations a lot more attractive. And uh, I think, you know, within Asia, one of the markets that we like is actually Singapore. I mean, because Singapore uh, is a leveraged player. The global economy recovers. Uh, you know, we think that, you know, the Singapore economy will benefit. Uh, yes, Singapore is seeing a resurgence in COVID-19, like many other parts of Asia. But I think the government will, you know, uh, get a handle of the situation. Um, and you've got a lot of value cyclical stocks on the Singapore stock market. Plus, Singapore offers one of the highest dividend yields uh, in Asia. So all that makes a fairly strong case for Singapore. Uh, but aside from Singapore, you know, China, uh, Indonesia, these are some of the markets that we have uh, overweight on. Uh, but generally, we think that, you know, Asia uh, right. ha having pulled back quite significantly should do quite well uh, in medium term.
Actually, we are going to get the final first quarter GDP numbers out of Singapore, right? Does it factor into your calculation that potentially the monetary authority is now returning to gradual appreciation bias? Well, you know, um, I think it may be still early days. You know, uh, we, we are seeing a resurgence of COVID-19 uh, here in Singapore. Uh, the government is trying to, you know, rein in the inflation numbers. Still too early for, you know, I think the central banks to do anything too aggressive. Uh, they'll wait, watch, and see what happens. And I think that although the numbers may turn out to be relatively good, uh, it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, the authorities are going to step in and tighten policy. I think uh, still early days, you know, I think uh, right. there's still room to wait and watch. And I think that's exactly what they'll do.